Good morning. It's Steve again. I uh, changed location just a little bit so it doesn't get too boring. Uh, I made this window uh, 20 years ago. Um, later on I'll make a video and tell you about it because it's kind of interesting. But for now, I would like to uh, talk to you about a study, a scientific paper that I read yesterday uh, about a study done in England in Cambridge uh, concerning uh, COVID. And basically what they found is that there was a relationship between people who died from COVID also having low levels of vitamin D in their bloodstream. Now vitamin D is a sunshine vitamin. We get that out in the sun and ultraviolet light in our skin makes all the vitamin D we need. And if you lived in the tropics, there would be no problems about deficiencies or not enough vitamin D. But people who lived in far northern climes tended to be a little bit on the uh, possibility of having deficiencies. If you have a major deficiency of vitamin D, you get a disease called rickets, which affects your bones because vitamin D is necessary in the calcium metabolism of your body to uh, lay down calcium in your bones. So the study found this relationship. Now I want to stress the word relationship. They did not find a cure. They did not find that this prevented a COVID or anything. They simply observed that in this group of people that died, that group of people also had this low vitamin D level. I think some further studies have come along that have indicated that when they are treating people for COVID, a little increase in the vitamin D supplementation along with it has been beneficial. So there is some relationship there. I know a little bit about vitamins. I was a veterinarian and I did a big uh, cattle herd health and I designed rations for them and these rations all included vitamin supplementation and I uh, designed and formulated various vitamin uh, mixtures that we would use to satisfy the needs of uh, the animals in there. And again, it was the same reason that we have here. Those animals used to run out on the, the Great Plains of America and Northern Europe and get all the sunshine they needed, but now they're in the barns. They don't have that direct sunlight and the vitamin D with cows, pigs, chickens is a, a very critical supplementation for them. So I know a little bit about that. I don't wanna really dive into vitamins because it is so controversial. And one side of the medical environment is, you know, dead set against this, and then there are fanatics over here that wanna uh, uh, cure everything there is with vitamins. But I have a very healthy respect for the need. Uh, your body needs vitamin D. And although the very first sign we had was this severe disease rickets, they are finding that there are more subtle influences in the body where vitamin D plays a part. They recently found that uh, a couple years ago that colorectal cancer, uh, people who had higher vitamin D levels had less of this cancer. So there is a vague relationship in there we do not understand. But I have left a link in the uh, comments of this study that I found. Uh, I caution you to look at it. And what I'm saying is that maybe in these circumstances where we are inside, the possibility that we might be a little bit marginal on vitamin D might be something a reasonable person would look at and might be something that you would consider supplementation. I have taken supplemental vitamin D3 for 40 years every single day. I take about 3,000 units every single day. So I know that that level, at least for a 225 pound guy, is not going to be uh, anything that's going to be harmful. But I have a healthy respect for anecdotal uh, evidence about the benefit of vitamins. Mainly because we don't have large scientific studies about the benefits of vitamins because no large pharmaceutical firm is going to spend millions of dollars running such a study when everybody could go out and buy that over the counter for pennies. So the research lags behind, but they have found these uh, correlations uh, into some disease processes. So 
basically with the vitamin D. I think I'll do a few more videos on some other vitamins that I use and the reasons, you know, the, the common sense reasons that I do use them. But for now, uh, take a look at this video. Uh, do a little research on your own. Take a look at what you normally do. Um, don't go to one far extreme. You know, my 3000, uh, they one time thought that vitamin D level should be around 500 uh, units per day. And then with some of these new studies, they are thinking maybe up to 12, 13,000. So I'm, I'm not jumping up there, but I am going to stay at the level I have been at because I think that it's reasonable. And uh, the very worst that could happen, and what everybody laughs about, is that if you take a few too many vitamins, you just have more expensive urine because your body excretes that excess out and you maybe waste your money. Um, and that's assuming you're not taking some gigantic level of it. So take a look at that. See what you think. Uh, use some common sense. And maybe that is just one more little piece of a puzzle that could give us one more step towards being able to uh, confront and avoid this uh, virus. So stay safe. Good luck to you. See you again later. Thanks.